Welcome to Startup Hack. Today we'll be continuing our series on coding for entrepreneurs. I'm a startup founder and a developer and I know the perfect balance between the two. So I'm doing a series of coding tutorials that include easy projects to, uh, to help your startup to make it easier for you to start your business, build the things you need, or if you're just learning so that you can be more efficient in managing developers and contractors, great. No matter what the reason that you're learning to code, I know that it will only make your business stronger. So let's go ahead and dig in and get started. Today we're going to talk about, the. Uh, this is the first of the series of tutorials to show you how to use any framework core in ASP.NET core razor pages. This tutorial builds a website for a fictional university. The site includes functionality such as student admission, course creation, and instructor assignment. The tu this tutorial will use a code first code approach in teaching you C-sharp.net, ASP.net core razor pages and any using any framework. So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to Startup Hack. My name is Spencer Tomlinson. I am the CEO and co-founder of Clean Router, as well as many other products. Here are some lessons that I've learned building a successful business while challenging startup norms. My challenge is to push you to rethink startup success. Welcome to Startup Hack. All right, let's go and dig in. So today we're going to learn a little bit more about Razor Pages, but more particularly about using Entity Framework Core in ASP.NET Core. Now, one of the things that Entity Framework does for you is it makes it really simple to create a data access layer and uses a code first approach so that you aren't having to write a lot of different SQL. So let's go ahead and dig in and uh, dig into our code project today. So now, uh, hopefully you've gone to the latest and pulled the latest on our GitHub project that has all of the coding samples. Now you're going to want to set for today's program, you're going to want to set the uh, razor page for Entity Framework uh, Core page one or part one into this setup. So we're going to go ahead and dig into this today. And if we fire this guy up and run this, uh, let's give it a second here to run. You're going to see that it'll run and it'll produce our first, uh, the first page. So uh, it takes a second to start up here because it's running some of the code migrations. Now, not all of this is going to be functional today. We're going to build this over coming weeks. Uh, and so or over the coming videos, not over the coming weeks. It uh, looks like we're going to do an eight-part video on this. So you can see our About, our Students page, which this one is currently functional, which will show how. And then also uh, the courses and instructors as well as other departments. So this will be uh, an important piece in helping us to, uh, you know, to allow us to uh, see how we're going to do our data access layer and the various different pieces. And so the rest of these aren't wired up yet. We will wire these up in future uh, tutorials. So, but let's go ahead and dig into the code a little bit and see where we're at. So, um, you know, obviously you can see in our program CS here, we had our database context, which is the school context. And this was actually going to say use SQL Server. So now we're going to build into digging into SQL Server and we're going to get a connection string of our school context. Now, if we go and look at our connection string here, school context connection string is the local MySQL database. And uh, you can see that we create a database for part one. We have our trusted connection. And so this will, um, out of the box, Microsoft SQL Server uh, Express will allow us to connect without using database passwords. That obviously isn't how you'd work in production. But for our coding sample today, this will get us started. We then add uh, the database developer page exception filter. Um, we are adding some other pieces that we'll get into today. And we're going to start building out and create our first scope for the school context. So let's dig into this a little bit and talk about some of the different pages. So again, we've laid out all of our pages. Uh, we have our students' pages and some other shared pages, but uh, some other shared views. But for right now, the one today is really we're going to be working on uh, the uh, index page and then working with the students page. So these are the pages that we're going to be building out today. And so we'll be able to see some of the different pieces here as we work on this. So uh, let's dig, dig into a little bit more about how this is, gets built out. So we have our, uh, our models, of course, for courses. And so this is going to be now decorated with a database generated or database generation option of none. And this is going to uh, tell it to uh, Tell it not to gen generate the database for these ones. And then you have enrollment. And then uh, you also have students. And so this is the one we're going to focus on today is on the students. 
So we'll be working with this uh, with the students to create a student uh, uh, table as we work on the database. So we now have our database initializer, and so this is a migration which is going to set up and seed our initial data into the database. And so when the code runs for the first time, it will check and make sure that this code exists. And if it doesn't exist, then it will go ahead and um, uh, it, uh, seed this data for us. Now we have our school context, um, and this is the context that we saw, um, you know, that we were initializing on the uh, startup program. And so as we start add this into the startup program, we will run through, and then uh, this will create the students, whether they were having enrollments, whether they have courses, and set up these uh, entity models in the database. So let's go ahead and uh, set a couple of breakpoints here, and we can show uh, how this begins to work. Okay, now we've run our application, and we can click on the students here. And now in the students, in this app built in these tutorials, is a basic university website. So users can view, update students and courses, and instructor information. And here are a few of the screens relating to the, uh, to the tutorial. Um, and so here's, so we, we can look through and see that we have our students, we have an edit, we can go look at the details of each student, we can go back to our list, we can edit each of these students and edit those, uh, and then you can even delete one of these students. And so, um, so this allows us to uh, build that up, to, uh, to build this, and we're going to build, we're going to learn how we built this in the application. And so, of course, first we have our CSD HTML page, and so we're going to set up some of the layouts that we're going to be shared between each of the uh, different programs. And so this is where we can add a title, like the Contesto University. We can uh, change it so that this is added here. Uh, and then we can also go through and lay out all of our menus, so the About. And this is where the layouts is going to affect each of our menus up here across the top. So as we look across these tops here, this is controlled in this uh, layout.cs file. Now. As we continue on, uh, we go to our index page, and on our index page, we can see uh, a couple of different uh, pieces here that we want to point out. So, um, in our index.h, uh, excuse me, index.cshtml, we can see that we have the reference to ASP.NET Core Data Entity Framework and the intro. And so, these are using some out of the box ones um, that we're using for introduction. And, and for this introductory. And as we look at these, you can see, uh, you know, we could dig down to whatever our data model is. This comes with an out-of-the-box database that's built by, uh, as part of the, um, as part of Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. So this is the, the general model that we create for our out-of-the-box database to make this, uh, a lot, this code set up a lot simpler. Now, you can see that these also will follow the student's model here that we have, and so these are our models for the students, and then this is a collection or a list of enrollments. And so um, as we look at two into these, we can see that this also is a list or an ienumerable or a collection of these enrollments. Now, if you right-click on this or if you just hit F12, you can say go to definition, and it will take you into that, uh, into that class. And so we can see that we have our various properties of these, um, the, uh, you know, and so Entity Framework now knows that as we have these various models, as we start to run up, we will see the, you know, set up the new scaffolding for us inside of the database. Now, as we set this up, you can see that as we went and looked, you can see the um, application settings, and this is where it's getting the connection string. So Local DB is a lightweight version of SQL Server Express database engine, and it's intended for app development, not for production use. So by default, LocalDB creates an MDF file in the, in the C slash users directory, and then will allow you to connect to that without any username or password. So we can update the, the existing data context by looking at our DB context here. And so the DB context, um, so we update our DB context by creating a class that extends the DB context. Uh, and what this does is the main class that coordinates entity framework functionality for a given data model is the database context class. This context is derived from Microsoft Entity Frameworks uh, core.db context. And so 
You can see that we've extended from that. The context specifies which entities are included in the data model. In this project, the class name is called school context. Now, we want to update this school context code so that we can include uh, you know, students, enrollments, courses. Then we have to set so that on the model creation, we have our model builder, which then builds out these tables. So the preceding code changes from singular data DB set student to the plural DB set. So you can see that instead of just a single student, we actually are setting a DB set for these. Um, to make the razor page code match the new DB set, we need to make a global change from the context to the student, uh, from student to students. And so this allows us to make those changes. So now in the program.cs, we uh, cores to, you know, so we know that core .net, ASP .NET core is built with dependency injection. Services, services such as school context are registered with dependency injection during this app startup, which we have, which happens here in the program.cs. Components that require these services, such as razor pages, are provided these services via a constructor parameter. The constructor code that gets a database context instance is shown later in the tutorial. So now, as we add the database exception filter, you can see that we add, uh, we add the database exception filter here. The, the name of the connection string is passed in to the context by calling a method on DB context option object. For local development, um, we read the connection string from the app settings.json file. Now, we add this, uh, we add an add database developer page exception and use migration endpoints as shown in the following code. So what this does is this is allowing us that if it's running in development mode, so if it's not running in development mode, then we would hit these parts. If it's running in dev mode, then we tell it, hey, you don't need to go and create this database because the database already exists. So otherwise, when we go to create the scope, and so if the, you know, we would tell it, go ahead and use the service provider, provider, get the required service, and then ensure that this is created and do the database initialize. Now this initialize code is what will then fire up and create that database if it doesn't exist. So this is where we can start to see that we're laying out our uh, DB context and getting entity framework to set up the, the database for us to make this very easy. So um, the ensure created here, what it does is it's the ensure created method takes no action if a database for the context exists. If no database exists, it creates the database and schema. Ensure created enables the following workflow for handling data models. It deletes the database. Any existing data will be lost. So we obviously want to make sure that we use this carefully. Um, it changes the data model. For example, if an e, uh, you know an e, add an email address field in our in our case, it then runs the app and ensures that it created uh, creates a database with new schema. So if we were to stop and restart this application, it'll run a lot faster than it um, than initially. Now, we also then need to make sure that we seed our database, which is what we were looking at before. So uh, to the ensure created method creates an empty database, and th this section here is what will then populate the database with test data. So we then want to make sure that we initialize our database and create the, with our school context, um, or excuse me, with our database initializer class here. What this will do is it'll seed all this data into the database for the first time. If the data has, um, if the database isn't is already been created, then it's not going to recreate these. It'll only do that on a database initialize. So that's where we can see that in that. Uh, um, so the code checks if there's any students in the database. If there's no students, it adds test data to the database. It creates a test data in an array rather than a list of T collection to optimize. So once we've done that, then and once we've run that once then we can go to our program settings and we can make sure that we uh, remove any of the um, and remove those calls from there then. So then we then at that point want to either uh, initialize uh, and we can comment this out or we can comment out the ensure created um, because we don't want those to run every single time. So these are some handy ways that any framework makes uh, starting up our code really simple and easy. And uh, we're going to go through a little bit more and continue to build out our, the rest of our application here in the coming uh, tutorials. So make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. 
Also, we're going to be launching a coding boot camp. Uh, this is going to be a unique opportunity. We're originally just in the first coding boot camp, only taking just a few students. So make sure you start up, check out startuphack.com uh, to check out all the details of our .NET Core uh, coding boot camp that we're going to be running. And uh, we will catch you guys next time. Thanks and have a good one.